Hello friends, this is the uh, first topics of the subject material science and metallurgy which is offered by Gujarat Technological University Ahmedabad. Introduction of material science and metallurgy is giving the idea about the definition of material science and metallurgy. What are the types of that materials? Classification of materials, classification of engineering materials. What mean by the engineering materials? What are the applications of the different engineering materials? What are the engineering requirements of engineering materials? Which are the advanced materials are used for the different applications in industries as well as some research institutes. What are the properties of the materials? Then what are the basic criteria to select a material? That we will discuss in this particular topics. Friends, this material science and metallurgy subject is very much important subjects for the design engineers who are in the field of the material selections and those who are working in the QC and QA department in the industries as well as the students of the mechanical engineer, metallurgical engineers and production engineers as well as the automobile engineering. Uh, friends, the materials development and advancement is directly related with the uh, human societies. As uh, you know that the civilizations have been named based on the level of the material development stage. In earlier days, as you just see that these are the uh, uh, different age are known based on the materials names. Uh, from the 3000 to 5000 back centuries, the time was known by the Stone Age. Then 1000 to 3000 back centuries time was known by the Bronze Age. And uh, Iron Age, Polymer Age, Concrete or Steel Age, Silicon Age and Information Age, these all are the time period is known based on that materials name and nowadays we are just going through the nano age there are the lots of research work is conducted on that materials developments that particular material science and metallurgy subjects it consists that material science it is nothing but it is the investigation of the relationships among the four different era that is the structure, processing, properties and performance. Here we have just represent this all the relationships among these four parameters through the tetrahedrons. Okay, that four corners of the tetrahedrons by represent by this all the four parameters. Right, suppose you have to take care about that suppose aluminium then you have to think about that what kind of the processing is required to change the shape size or to get the extract from that uh, aluminium ores it means that based on that extractive um, uh, process we can achieve the purities of the aluminium and the structure of the aluminiums okay so based on the processing the structures and purities depends now based on the structure structure is nothing but it is the atomic arrangement in that space so if the structure is the particular uh, uh, shapes then based on the structures you may predict the properties properties means whatever the force we are applying against that force what kind of the behaviors of materials have. Okay, so 
this all the three parameters are uh, related with each other or having some relationships and if we just combine this output of these three parameters or three uh, uh, bullets then we can define the performance of that particular materials I means how it will be performed in particular service so that is why here that material science is the investigation of the relationships among the processing structures properties and performance of the materials uh, now let's see that the in your routine life or you, in your routine applications you are using that so much uh, common uh, devices or instruments or things here in photographs you just uh, able to see that this is the gas stoves in this we are using the uh, glass top this is the ceramic materials toughen glass here there is the uh, sandwich makers so it is also inner surface of the sandwich makers is concerned with the high temperatures okay so uh, there is particular coatings we have to require which having the less thermal uh, uh, conductivity okay here the pressure cookers are there so high pressure is generated inside the pressure cookers so and here this is the refrigerators so, uh, its uh, surface is the very shiny surface then the, again the inside that uh, to refrigerator uh, we are having the thermal insulator we are using okay so there are also some common like that example table bench speckles fans watch brackets spikes for our routine applications and for each and every applications there are the some particular properties is required okay uh, let's talk about that industries so industries are more dependent on the progress of the technology it's called the constant improvement in the property because the day by day in industries uh, there are the challenges facing uh, light weight materials are required so for some uh, applications for the aerospace app uh, uh, applications okay for the fighter planes if we are just having that light uh, uh, weight materials we can achieve that supersonic velocity easily okay for that uh, 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 space shuttles also we are requiring the light weight materials and with the light weight we are requiring the high thermal stability also so this is the, uh, require some r and d works and bridge storming activities for that okay and this is possible only by the combinations of the metals or non metals or composites material it's called the alloys or composites so the effective use of this uh, alloys and composite materials are required in industries uh, next uh, uh, some advancement in the materials are there this is the you just see that in this uh, photographs they are having the some color changing materials are there right uh, with the change in the light intensity the colors of materials being changed okay you know, uh, you well aware about that sunglasses if uh, some high intense uh, sunlight is focus on that particular glass it will be start to blackish so friends in engineering applications that material having uh, the behaviors and properties it is the main concern for the applications now let's uh, go toward the what is the metallurgy friends material science and metallurgy so we have seen that the what is the material science and what we have to study in that way okay so now uh, go toward that material metallurgy the so metallurgy is nothing but it is the science of the metals okay uh, if we uh, we just more focus on that that art and science of procuring and adapting the metals to satisfy human requirements means that nature have given us the metallic particles or elements in form of the ores you just see this is the ores but we cannot directly use this ores for our particular desired applications or requirements so that is why what we have to do we have to do the first from that ores we have to extract the metals okay by some different processing okay 
so this processing or we have to study this all the processing to extract the metals from the ores or raw materials we can say that it is called the extractive metallurgy you just see that this is the extractive metallurgy right this is the iron ores from that ores we are just getting the raw materials we are melting it then we just uh, remove the impurities and just extract some pure elements from that particular ores this is called the extractive metallurgy now if we are having them same pure metals but we are not using the same metals for that our require or our desired applications so we we require to add some amount of the different elements to achieve some particular properties okay so which kinds of that material i have to add in particular uh, compositions okay so that is the uh, require some studies and the, uh, that that require some base of the science so this all the things we can just uh, uh, study in a physical metallurgy okay in that we can just study that thermodynamics physical chemistry and alloying principles okay uh, now next uh, if we are having some good materials having good properties according to our service required now next steps is we require to give required shapes and size to that materials okay so from this metal we require to form this vessels okay so for to to manufacturing these vessels from this kinds of the metals what kinds of processings we have to carry out that we will learn or study in this mechanical metal it means that the raw materials a raw metals is converted to the useful form by the casting rolling forging extrusion right welding cutting bending everything right that will and because of this manufacturing process what kind of change in the structure properties that we will learn in the mechanical metallurgy okay so these are the three basic uh, branch of uh, metallurgy now next uh, uh, engineering materials friends we have just learned about the material science and metallurgy okay in that there are the material it means the common it is nothing but it is the states of the matters okay suppose we just talk about that uh, uh, in this uh, yeah, this is nothing but it is the abrasive wear right diamond uh, for uh, uh, polish karne ke liye we are using this is the diamond polishing wheels so what is that inside that wheels right that is called the matter okay iske andar kya hai cheez we can touch it we can feel it this is called the material but engineering materials so normal materials jo hai that usko engineering material mein convert karne ke liye kya karna padega jaise ki humne we have discussed earlier that the iron ores the metals and then actual component so that iron ores is nothing but it's not a engineering material okay we have to do the some value adding process to convert the raw materials into the en uh, engineering materials so the engineering materials plays an important role in the construction manufacturing of the equipments and tools those who are used in engineering okay so uh, now the engineering materials is a subject which deals with the manufacturing properties and use of that particular material in applied engineering the range of the engineering materials are varies from the lightweight to heavy materials in some applications we are requiring the lightweight materials in some applications we are requiring the heavy weight materials okay so for examples alloys for the aircraft okay those are having the lightweight materials semiconductors chips for the pc those are having the high current conductivities and photovoltaic for the energy storage okay semiconductors then semiconductor scanners so these are all the range of the engineering materials are uh, there now let's go towards the classification of engineering materials okay so there are the uh, basic 
the three kinds of the classifications are there uh, according to the states of the matters according to the developments according to the requirements and in that the according to the matters so let's see that one by one what is the uh, uh, states of the matter friends do you know what mean by the states of matters states of matter means that whatever the materials matters are there it is available in which states that is the physical states physical existivity that is nothing but that is the you know that the materials having the three basic states of matter the solid liquid and gaseous but nowadays the fourth states of matter is a plasma okay that is we are just now day by day some more research is uh, doing on that uh, plasma okay in our gujarat there is the special institutes are there right institute of plasma research ipr okay and that these institutes is working constantly on the plasma matters solids means in that the atomic arrangements are closely there are the physical bonds are there and the atoms are closely bounded with each other that is why it's having the high strength if we just move toward the liquids then the bonding between the two atoms are larger than the solid solid se thoda bada bond hoga and it is the weaker bonds than the solids and in the gaseous the atoms are very separately right ek is corner pe hai ek dusra corner pe but and that is why it is very weak bonds or there is no bonds are like that right so these are the basic three uh, states of the matters now next uh, according to uh, this availability that is the natural materials and synthetic material natural means we are getting that materials from the direct natures for one example biomass materials for one example uh, 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 petrol diesel kerosene right matlab petroleum products jo hame milta hai crude oil jo these are the natural products natural materials are there okay then synthetic material synthetic material it is the man made materials right by applying some science principles right make this element with uh, mix with this element and then they are having some uh, r&d works and they generate the new material that is called the synthetic material or man made materials uh now according to the uh, Uh, materials according to the its structure according to the at atomic arrangement okay materials having the classified with the service requirement uska requirement kya functional requirement ke hisab se material ko classified karna hai structural uh, uh, requirement ke hisab se aapko material classified karna hai so and this is the structural requirements and eh? functional requirements okay so let's go toward the structural requirement so there are the two kinds of the possibilities are there crystalline material and amorphous material crystalline material means that atomic arrangement in particular same order three dimensionally having in some specific shapes and size in some range of order while in amorphous there is the haphazard arrangement of the atoms are there okay so this is the basically classified the structural materials are crystalline material and amorphous material in the crystalline materials they are having the single crystals or polycrystalline materials polycrystalline mat means there is the same unique patterns 
of the arrangement is repeating order okay is in repeating order and in the single crystal there is the only the single crystals or single patterns which is not repeating only the single patterns is uh, there okay now the functional the functional materials are there it is classified according to the functional area for one example the aerospace materials biomedical materials electronic materials energy technology and environmental materials magnetic materials optical materials and smart materials राइट right? आपको मालूम है कि एरोस्पेस मटेरियल के अंदर कॉम्पोजिट मटेरियल कौन से कौन से होते हैं तो उसका नाम ही हो जाता है कि भाई दिस इज द एरोस्पेस मटेरियल राइट लाइक फॉर वन एग्जांपल एल्युमिनियम एलोइज की बात करें और सुपर एलोइज की बात करें दैट ऑलमोस्ट दैट एल्युमिनियम एलोइज एंड सुपर एलोइज मटेरियल्स आर यूज्ड इन दैट एरोस्पेस मोस्टली ओके देन इन बायोमेडिकल मटेरियल दैट हाइड्रोक्सी पेटाइट मटेरियल हाइड्रोक्सी एपिटेट मटेरियल इज यूज्ड फॉर द बायोमेडिकल we are just doing some uh, uh, coatings of the hydroxy apatites right on that particular uh, steels and that will be used uh, in the joint replacements titanium alloys stainless steel shape memory this is stent aata hai right so that stent is made of the shape memory alloys okay uh, plastics pizzated uh, materials next is electronic material so you well aware about that the silicon chips we are using for the solar okay so uh, germanium okay uh, aluminium copper this tungsten this all the materials silver this all the material used for the electronic applications energy technology and environmentals zirconium uh, oxides okay nickel cadmium lithium cobalt dioxide this all the materials are used for the uh, environmental purpose right the for the filter to manufacture the filter everything then magnetic materials that is based on that ferrous materials okay optical materials means the glass aluminum oxide aluminum dioxide laser yad source right cadmium source okay uh, then smart materials it is again the shape memory alloys it is also smart materials having some specific smart applications okay so uh, this is about the some functional requirement materials over there now uh, according to that some matters right we can just classify the materials that is nothing but it is the metallic materials and non metallic materials in that metallic materials further it can be classified as a ferrous material and non ferrous materials okay metallic means in that particular materials there are the presence of metallic elements friends you are aware about that the periodic tables inside that almost metallic materials are presence over there right so among of that all the metallic materials we can make the combinations of one or more elements and make the metallic materials that is called the alloys also that we will discuss later so basically according to the matters metallic material the non metallic is classified over here let's see that the ferrous material first the ferrous material is again classified ferrous means the iron okay so ferrous materials is further classified in the steel and cast iron if i'm having that the one materials in which there are the percentage of carbon is more than 1.5% more than 1.5% of the carbon then it's called the cast iron 
and if I am having the less than 1.5 percent carbon, 1.4 percent carbon is less than carbon, then that material is known about the states. This is the practical figures. Theoretical figures we will discuss later. The iron carbon diagram. According to that iron carbon diagrams, if the carbon percentage is less than two percent, then it is called the steels. And if the carbon percent is increased than the two percent, then it is known as the cast iron. Okay. So uh, now discuss about the steels is further classified according to the low alloy steels and high alloy steels. Okay. Uh, we will see the detailed classification with the percentage of alloys and percentage of elements in our next subsequent lectures. But here that the, it is further classified in the low alloy steels and the high alloy steels. Low alloy meat means they are having some percentage of alloying elements within some less than particular figures. So it is further classified. Low alloy steel is further classified in the low carbon steels, medium carbon steels, and high carbon steels. And high alloy steels is further classified. It is the stainless steels and tool steels. Isn't it? Okay. Now, the cast iron is further classified in the wrought iron, grey cast iron, malleable cast iron, and nodular cast iron. Okay. Now, let's move towards the non-ferrous metals. Non-ferrous metals are further classified. In a plastic, मतलब polymeric, ceramic materials and composite materials. This plastic is further classified in three category. You just see that this is the thermoplast, thermostates and elastomers. Friends, basically the difference between these three polymers are nothing but having some properties. Thermoplastics are those plastic. Which can have some flexibility. You can reuse it. Okay, in thermosets plastic, you can't reuse it. It is very hard compared to the thermoplastic. Right, bakelites, phenolics, epoxies, like that. Elastomers having that high ductility properties are there. Okay. And the ceramics and other materials are further classified in oxides, nitrides, carbides, glasses, glass ceramic, graphite, diamond. These all are the oxides, means aluminium oxides, tungsten oxide, vanadium oxides, zirconium oxide. These all are the ceramics materials and composites materials. Composites materials are nothing but it is the mixture of the one or two materials. That means the ceramic and metals. If we just add it, then it is called the sur mat. Sur, मतलब ceramic. Mat, मतलब metallic. So sur mat is nothing but it is the composite materials. Second is that the reinforced plastic. It means carbon fibers. Okay. So metal laminates are also composites. Okay. Uh, so this is nothing but it is the non-ferrous metal classification over here. Okay, so we have discussed the general classification of uh, uh, engineering materials over here. Now, friends, we will discuss about the advanced engineering materials. Advanced materials are revolutionizing the way company do the business and demanding that R and D and engineering teams keep up. Means, हर एक company का एक R and D divisions होता है. those who are working in the field of material science or uh, manufacturing of the materials or fabrication industries etc so that day by day the new demands is raised by the industries or industrial requirements so 
it is the revolutionizing the way company do the business company is dealing with the different big big sectors uh, uh, and to decreasing the cost to manufacture the high efficiency equipments at the lower cost to meet the market challenges they are demanding that r&d and engineering team of that industries has to do something to keep up some new materials so basically that advanced material find out or derive by the differentiations from the molecular level right they are just reach up to that molecular or atomic levels of that the structure of particular materials and as a new material utilize the research communities understanding the chemical compounds and structure inside that particular materials as well as the other property of particular that materials and this knowledge or the understanding is utilized to improve the product performance how we can enhance the quality or productivity of particular existing materials in the view of the capabilities in the view of the efficiency of the production process etc so why the advanced materials being used in industries they are more emphasized that you have to derive some new advanced materials so these are the three basic reasons why we are adopting the advanced materials reduce the cost and increase the profitability first advanced materials that are the very stronger lighter in weight and more durable with last longer and due to this reasons we are saving money on replacing the part it means that if you are on having the some uh, existing material like that the carbon steel or high carbon steel i am using that material to manufacture a boilers now instead of or i am replacing that the uh, high carbon steel materials by using some chrome moly vanadium this is the advanced material which are used for the boiler drum manufacturing so in that chrome moly vanadium materials the thickness to strength ratio is smaller or we can say that the strength to thickness ratio is very high compared to the high carbon steel it means if i am just satisfy with the 250 mm thick high carbon steel plate the same performance is satisfy the 45 mm thick chrome moly vanadium steels it means drastically reduction in the weight or reduction in the dimensions so that is why when i'm just replacing that high carbon steels with the chrome moly vanadium steels i will save the man hour which are adopting to manufacture particular boiler drum as well as i can just reduce the welding consumable which is used to join these two plates okay so by the saving materials right we can save lot of money we can save the time in the manufacturing we can just decrease the complexity in the operational management so so many challenges can be solved by adopting the advanced material second reason is that increase the customer satisfactions and loyalty because of their inherently improved properties in the advanced materials it can lead to the final product that can be better fulfillment of the customer requirements okay and by the research work 
वी कैन प्रूव दैट इन द एडवांस मटेरियल वी कैन अचीव द लेस डिफेक्ट और फ्यूअर डिफेक्ट विच विल ट्रांसलेट इन टू द इंक्रीज कॉम्पिटिटिवनेस मार्केट के अंदर अगर आपका एडवांस मटेरियल प्रोडक्ट है देन यू विल कॉम्पीट टू द अदर पार्टनर्स और अदर कॉम्पिटिटर्स then the third one reason is that regulatory compliance and sustainability day by day the government policies are being changed for that environmental impact policies safety policies so that newer and more stringent regulations are making the manufacturing and productions more and more tough so using the advanced material should have a uh, Uh, companies comply with the regulations without sacrificing the performance objectives okay so these are the basic reasons that we have to adopt the advanced materials to sustain your existence into the market right because day by day that there are the many more competitions are going in, in the market okay you have to adopt the advanced material okay to sustain in the market friends uh, this is the uh, advanced engineering material research uh, data uh, till the 2014s okay so if you just find out that there are the some uh, developed countries and uh, uh, some uh, uh, competitions between that uh, countries to to do the research work for the advanced engineering material right you just see that the china having the 36% articles increase right in the research area of the material material research okay that the japan ha having the highest uh, research articles in the area of the material research right okay so you just see that in the 2000 uh, 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 right in the year of the 2000 you just see that there are only that the uh, 75000 around articles was published and if in that 2014 it will reach up to the 2000 per year okay 2000 articles has been published in the area of the material research so from this uh, 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 particular pictures you can conclude that the day by day that our peoples are more busy in the area of the advanced engineering material research so it will be never stops friends aapko jaise maloom hai ki insaan ki ichha shakti kabhi mar nahi sakti okay dil mange more right zyada se zyada expectation badhti jati hai badhti jati hai okay pehle by walk chalte the uske baad cycle aayi uske baad two wheelers scooters aaya uske baad four wheelers aaya फोर व्हीलर के बाद आए थे लग्जरी कार्स मीन्स डे बाई डे दे आर इंक्रीजिंग देर डिमांड्स दे आर इंक्रीजिंग देर रिक्वायरमेंट्स ओके एंड दैट इज वाई टू मेक द इकोनॉमिक टू मेक द रिलायबल प्रोडक्ट डेफिनेटली वी हैव टू अचीव द गोल ऑफ द परफेक्ट मटेरियल ओके सो दिस इज दन डेटा right i have shown you uh what are the advanced materials are there right for uh, i have just uh, summarized the few of them so lightweight materials is also count under the advanced materials so the titanium magnesium and aluminiums and alloys those are having the lightweight materials next is the composite materials which are having the combinations of the one or two metals properties and they are just combining that properties and they make the more satisfied materials steels which are available in the dual phase steels that is the dupex stainless steels right uh back hardening steels trade steels etc so these are the common using that materials over here friends what are the basic applications of the advanced materials as we have discussed that the uh, titanium aluminum and manganese having the lightweight materials so that kinds of the materials are using for the aerospace industries 
ओके जैसे कि हमने इंडिया ने अभी मतलब रिसेंटली फ्रांस को राफेल का ऑर्डर दिया दैट इज द फाइटर प्लान सो टू मैन्युफैक्चर द फाइटर प्लान वी हैव टू एडॉप्ट सम एडवांस मटेरियल टू रिड्यूस इट्स वेट एंड बिकॉज ऑफ द रिडक्शन इन द वेट्स वी कैन अचीव द सुपरसोनिक वेलोसिटी इज इजिली then in the automobile industries we can just talk about the uh, uh, car racing cars so to decrease the car weight we have to adopt the carbon fiber okay because when the weight will be reduced then the again same thing we can achieve the higher speeds we can achieve the higher mileage second thing the nano composite is used for that football and some different rubber products or di- at at that different stage or in the different field of applications the nano materials are being used so at the nano level nano atomic levels we can just make the corrections into the compositions and we can just make the layer on the layer on the layer and we can make the nano composites material to achieve that some particular properties or we can improve the properties of materials okay so these are the basic uh, 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 examples for that the advanced material applications over here now let's discuss about the engineering requirements of the materials friends how we can just say that this material is a engineering material so to fulfill the requirements of the engineering materials we have just define some criteria those material who those are satisfied this three basic requirement that can be a engineering material so first one is the fabrication requirement friends for the engineering purpose we have to manufacture any components from the raw materials so that is why that material should have the ability to get shape easily and it is relate themselves with the materials machinability ductility castability heat retainability and weldability means material should be able to form in some different shapes the material has to able to machine material should have some ductility material should castable material should have some heat retainability means we can carry out some heat treatments on that to improve its properties and to make some components we require some weld joint also the material should able to weld it the next requirement is the service requirements to imply the service requirement for particular applications so it it must have some capacity to stand up to that service demands it means it relates themselves with the materials proper strength okay up in that service requirement material should be with strength up to that strength then some materials are prone for the wear so that material having the higher wear resistance jaise ki brake ke liner aap automobile ke le lo so brake liners having the higher wear resistance corrosion resistance ki baat ki karte hain so in some uh, uh, food industries in some pharma industries those machineries are being used for that corrosive atmospheres that materials having the higher corrosion resistance it means that in that whatever the service requirements that machine components are solved that condition should be satisfied by particular that materials and last but not least economics requirements it demands that the engineering part should be made with the minimum overall cost okay that all the service requirements and all the fabrication requirements are satisfied but the cost is very high so will it be feasible no so that is why 
that material should be economical also so that minimum overall cost may be achieved by proper selections of both technical and the marketing variables both so uh, friends yahan tak hum engineering requirements of material tak dekhte hain in next lecture we will discuss about the different properties of materials namaste thank you